What's up, people? If you're trying to figure out what you're gonna do in Merida, Yucatan, this is the video for you. It's crazy, but it's been more than a year since I filmed any vlog content of this sort. So what better way to start it off again than where it all started in Mexico. For this video, I'm in Merida, Yucatan's capital city. So I'm gonna start off this video in Centro Historico of Merida, or the historic center. To one side, right in front of me, is the government palace. Behind me is the House of Montejo, who was, uh, I believe, the first conquistador who made his way to Merida from Spain. And then to one side is the biggest cathedral. Now if you've seen my videos in Mexico City or Guatemala City, you might notice a very familiar pattern here. Looks like the Spanish didn't get too creative on how they designed their city centers back in the day. So once you're already at the plaza for Centro Historico, the next logical thing to do is to head over to the main cathedral, which happens to be one of the more impressive cathedrals in this part of the world. So along with holding the title of being the second oldest cathedral in all of Latin America, there are a couple of other really cool things about this one. The first one is that it's next to this gorgeous passage called the Passage of the Revolution. It always seems to have these nice works of modern art in them. Right now it's got some really cool statues. The second one is that the big statue of Jesus Christ in there is supposed to be one of the largest statues of Jesus Christ of that kind in Latin America. And the third one, and the one that was the most interesting to me, was that when I was walking along inside the cathedral, I noticed that the tiles on the ground were looking a lot like tombstones, and I found out later that they are indeed tombstones. Apparently, it was really considered uh, a prestigious thing to be buried, or have your ashes buried in a cathedral back in the days. So people paid a lot of money to be buried underneath the cathedral where people are praying. So that's a new one for me, at least. After the cathedral, walk over to the house of Montejo. Montejo was the Spanish conquistador who conquered Yucatan way back in the 16th century. And being the ruler of the land, he tried to ensure that his residence was fit for a king. These days, whatever's left of that has been turned into a mix between a bank and a museum that you can still visit. So I think one of the interesting things about Montejo was that Apparently he was quite the narcissist, even compared to conquistador standards. How do I know? Because apparently he had his face carved into a bunch of the statues on his palace that were not even of him. So there are a few more interesting places you can visit without going too far from Centro. Walk a few minutes and you'll find Palacio de la Musica, a museum dedicated to Mexican music. Walk another 100 meters and you'll be at the famous Hidalgo Park with the famous statue in the middle. And right behind this park, right there actually, is Iglesia El Jesus. Another church that is smaller than the main cathedral but arguably also prettier. Walk another 100 meters and you can see the Autonomous University of Yucatan with its pretty courtyard if you happen to go inside. This was founded by Felipe Carrillo an enduring local hero with indigenous roots. Carrillo was a revolutionary hero and the first governor of Yucatan after the Mexican Revolution. He was known for pushing reforms to help the region's neglected Maya communities. So the thing that was the most interesting about this guy is that he was a socialist back when he came into power and the Mexican government didn't like that very much. So they ended up killing him. And then a couple of years later, they realized that, oops, we made a mistake. His story is definitely one worth reading more into. But back to Merida. A little further away from Centro is its most famous avenue, Paseo de Montejo. It's not exactly as fancy as Paris's Champs Elysees if you've been there, but it's still definitely worth checking out. For its famous ice cream spots and delicious street side food, and for nothing else. Now, speaking of food, no trip to Mexico is complete without trying some amazing local food. So I did a little bit of research and ended up going to this restaurant that was recommended on Yucatan's official Reddit page for its amazing Yucatan cuisine. It was definitely a pretty fancy place. And I have to say the appetizers were on point. 
tomate asado, pico de gallo, spicy, chile habanero. Gracias. Now, after discussing with the waiter, I got some of the items he recommended. The soup called sopa de lima and some stuffed cheese with almond sauce. Now, it was time for the real deal and to find out how good this was. Now, Yucatan cuisine is considered by many um, experts to be one of the best cuisines in Mexico. And that right there was pretty amazing. But I'm not gonna lie, if I had to choose between street tacos and that, I'd probably pick street tacos any day of the year. Maybe it's because my peasant taste buds uh, are not very good at appreciating that cuisine, but it is what it is for me. Good news was, I didn't give up on Yucatan food after that. So I was talking to a local about the food, and after hearing my thoughts, he told me what I really needed to do was to head to a popular local market and try some panuchos and salbutes. The next day, I headed off to Santiago Park to find this food. I walked past a white church and a cute little park, and it was time to order some panuchos and salbutes. A panuche starts with a tortilla that's stuffed with some refried beans, and then the tortilla is fried and finally topped with meat pickled onions, and more delicious veggies. A salbute is very similar, but the tortilla is simply fried and topped up with everything but refried meat. Okay, so that was just incredible. The food was so good. And the best part was when I asked them if I could record it, they got super excited and took me straight to the back so I could watch them make it and prepare the whole thing. I ended up getting another round of two more salbutes. So this brings me to probably the most important point I want you to take home from this video. If you're ever anywhere in Mexico and you're not finding amazing food, you're probably not looking hard enough. So that is it for this video from Merida. If you have any questions about any of the places I went to, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if you like this video, don't forget to like the video and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my content. I'll catch you guys next time.